father would have to be censored. And so Nick Fuentes raised this obvious um, conundrum to her. Here's what she wrote back. She wrote back, oh my God, were you called a rat? Did that hurt? I work for myself, you loser. And I know that Jews' success is due to their above average IQ. <laughs> Even when Michaela's trying to fight the Nazis, she's still doing the IQ sh I know that they have large craniums. I've measured them. Their skull capacity far outweighs yours, your puny IQ Nick Fuentes. Yeah, positive racism. Even though factually and statistically it is not. And part of that learning process for me when I started looking into it was coming across a huge fact. So that's just like, again, just out of the gate, such a massive, massive statement to make. Of course, like, yeah, objectively, there's not really a way scientifically, uh, empirically, that we know to quantify evil. We don't have an evil meter so we can't be like, well, I mean, there's Hitler, but there's also Mussolini, and there's Pol Pot, you know, and, you know, and Pol Pot was really bad. I mean, I believe I believe uh, he genocided 1.2 to 2 million Cambodians around there. That's a very large percentage of the population. Horrifying evil monster by, by any measure. Yes, definitely. Um, and yes, uh, Hitler's genocide of the Jewish people, for example, over 6 million Jews killed in the Holocaust. That's also incredibly horrifying and evil. What a weird thing to even start, though, by saying we're told that this is really, really bad. Like the, one of the worst evils imaginable. But then I learned a surprising fact that apparently it's not. That, I mean, that this was just a fact. I mean, we were just told our entire lives that, you know, what Hitler had done was really, really bad. But prepare. That we ethnically, the Allies, ethnically cleansed 12 million Germans. Because when you say to people, okay, what is it about Hitler? How, why is he the most evil? Well, the first thing people would say is, well, an ethnic cleansing almost took place. And now I offer it back. You mean like we actually did in this case is Germany, Nazi, Hitler, the greatest evil. So um, I haven't watched the full thing because I, I do want to get a little bit more into uh, her recent video that apparently is a takedown of Jordan Peterson, which I'm very excited for. I, I, you know, uh, the basically conservative chud on chud violence is, is most beautiful indeed. But I am a little bit curious to see her flush this idea out because I've only seen the clip. Of course, I've gone through it. Any person really that has a platform has gone through this. But I will never forget this now that I'm on the other side of it and so many years have passed. The first time that I ever almost got canceled. It was because I was discussing Adolf Hitler in an academic sense. Actually, the subject wasn't even about Adolf Hitler. It was a question that was being asked of me. You remember this clip notoriously. They were asking about the word nationalism and why people are afraid of embracing the word nationalism. And I said that it was wrongly attributed to Adolf Hitler. And then BuzzFeed took me out of context. and made it seem as though I was saying Hitler was a good guy, which of course. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Clear. In congressional hearings, the minority party gets to select its own witnesses. And of all the people that Republicans could have selected, they picked. I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by uh, leaders that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German. All right, so my... I, well, what about that was academic? It was ahistorical, it was wrong, and it was downplaying the severity of what was happening at the time. Uh, yeah, prior to uh, Hitler's expansionism, aka invading other countries, uh, he was persecuting Jews domestically. That was already happening. So, yeah, just trying to say that, like, his problem was, it's more the term nationalist, you know, I think it just gives nationalism a bad, bad vibe. So, like, Hitler, uh, he was a globalist, uh, and so that's that's really what the problem was. And so people just associate Hitler with nationalism when they should be associating Hitler with globalism. But, uh, you know, it's, again, how could this be misconstrued? I wasn't. That's always a hoax when somebody is pretending that someone jumped up and said that. But it didn't matter. People were in visceral response when we hear his name. That's why I did the sound effect. Dun, dun, dun. Because they have turned him almost into Lord Voldemort. I don't know if you're a Harry Potter fan. I definitely was and am one. And this whole concept of a dark lord who should not be named. Adolf Hitler is he who should not be named. And what's really interesting is that
I don't know if there is another historical figure that has been quite studied as much as Adolf Hitler in terms of like <laughs> academia, historians, paper after paper. There was a lot of interest and curiosity as to how not only did Hitler come to power or the Nazi and the fascist movement itself, but also what exactly were the precursors to that? What what conditions needed to be set in terms of society to be able to adopt and uh, really collectively start uh, agreeing with mass eugenics and genocidal policies that the Nazis eventually started enacting. Um, that, that certainly is something that has, has uh, made people very curious. I, I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> you know, to, to be like, they we're just not allowed, no one can talk about, you know, who can't even say his name. Like, you know, you're not even allowed to talk about him. It's like, what are you talking about? Everyone talks about him. He, he He's basically the barometer, you know, for, for like, hey, by the way, if you want to compare someone to be an absolute horrifying monster, you usually compare them to Adolf Hitler. Yes, that's usually usually how this goes. There are other monsters. No one's ever said that he was the only monster in human history. He's one of many, right? But certainly, it's, it's not true at all that you're not allowed to talk about Hitler. Now, if you're going into the direction of you're not allowed to talk about maybe the good things that Hitler did, you're not allowed to talk about some of the bad things the Allies did, Right? I mean, were the Allies all benevolent? Did they not commit some more crimes? Was there not some bad things they did? Absolutely they did. Yes, of course. There, there was lots of war crimes committed during World War II from, from all sides, and post-World War II as well. And there continues to be war crimes committed by a whole bunch of different countries, especially ones that you're told are supposed to be the noble arbiters of democracy on the world stage. No, they do horrifying stuff as well. And no one's saying you can't have that discussion either. It's, it's kind of uniquely in the white supremacist storm fronty section of the internet where people start to want to kind of introduce these ideas right like is it wrong to only talk about hitler's evils can we not talk about like any other historical figure i mean he's complex there were other things that he did that other people might not perceive as being completely bad were the allies completely good and benevolent we were told that story too but did they not do some fucked up shit too so well, you know when you even discuss, you would assume, since that's the entire focus, the, the nucleus of our idea of who a bad person is, step aside Satan because we've got Adolf Hitler. When you assume that people therefore must know a lot okay, of because Satan is insofar as we know, but prove me wrong, is not real. So far as we know, we, we just like they could be that, you know, the Dark Lord, the prince uh, actually is controlling and manipulating all of us from, you know, the fires of hell. That could be happening. You know, the fallen angel does do some fucked up shit in theory, but we don't know if Satan is in fact real. We do know that Hitler was real and did a lot of really evil, horrifying, bad stuff that we should collectively call out in perpetuity, I would say. I think that's probably a healthy practice. It's a good one. It's, it's a certainly a big difference, as you might see, between, you know, some of the mea culpa that uh, Germany uh, as a society has made versus, say, uh, Italy where uh, they didn't completely destroy uh, fascism uh, itself or try to basically teach for generations uh, the evils prevalent in fascism. Like, yes, Mussolini got hung upside down and all that kind of stuff, but there were still other fascists within the party that never saw their day in court, and uh, there's still descendants of Mussolini who get elected into public office kind of shit. So, yeah, um, it's, it's one of those things where it's really a good thing to just perpetually teach that Hitler was bad. About World War II, you then find out that actually Americans know nothing about World War II. My husband was amazed by this, by the way, obviously, because I'm in this sort of cross-national relationship. My husband was like, why? His, his, her husband's the, the white dude who founded the failed social media site. Not Gab, but the other one, the one that no one, I can't even remember the name of it anymore. I used to have an account on it. I just definitely don't go there. Now it's just all, what, truth and something else. But yeah, so the, the, that that one. Do Americans always use Adolf Hitler as if, you know, he was the number one master? It wasn't Gab, the it's the other one. He wasn't. It was the one after Gab. What is this extreme focus on Nazis and Adolf Hitler as the only comparison we can ever make? And like I said, it's because we have been indoctrinated and we actually know nothing about the person Not other getting, than the fact no, wow, no that one can we remember must fear him. And if you parlor. really, really, really want Thank you, someone finally got there. It was Parlor. It's Parlor. The answer was Parlor. <laughs> no one talks about Parlor anymore. And said to these innocent German speaking civilians, I'm going to torture you because I don't I don't know where my parents are. And and they were put into camps and then he began to torture the. See, you're using a lot of words synonymously. You keep saying like, well, you always hear about what Hitler did. 
was sad, but did you hear about like the fact that like other people also held camps? What do you mean by camps? I, are you talking about forced labor internment camps where there was a mass orchestrated systemic genocide of Jewish people that was done by the Nazis? That this was very, very industrialized and well organized and on a scale of which, yes, it is human barbarism, the likes of which we had never uh, encountered. Uh, where it's like, it's not simply, you know, people are going here for forced labor, they're going here for mass extermination millions and millions of people, not just Jewish people, like people who were seen as unfit, who weren't seen as part of the master Aryan race, people who uh, were disabled, people who were queer, gay people, trans people, uh, you know, Roma people, people who weren't white enough, who were considered part of the pure whites, the good whites, uh, lots of different groups, all, all part of, you know, the collective extermination uh, that the Nazis were doing. Yes, you... <laughs> That, that's not a lie. All, all that is true. It all happened. <laughs> it's like, did did the Allies also commit war crimes uh, against members of the Axis? Of course they did. Like the the civilian bombings that the U.S. did on Tokyo, horrifying. You know, just again, just a month straight of firebombing a paper city where the you know, children and women were burned alive. Uh, there were mass rapes that were done by uh, you know groups of Allies. Again, yes, this is a uh, a global scale of horrific atrocities that are being done but that doesn't change the fact that defeating hitler was good <laughs> defeating fascism and the nazis was good also you know <laughs> like them in mass and uh, i don't know i guess statute of limitations can expire that's all i'm going to say on that because israel is of course our, our greatest ally the most moral everything in the world do you know who else agreed with those czechoslovakian civilians that the things that were done to the germans were utterly horrific General George Patton Jr., you're probably familiar with his name because he was a very decorated U.S. general in World War II. Why is she seen for Hitler and the Nazis? Well, I mean, the I didn't think Candace would be going down this road, but essentially what you're trying to do is normalize a lot of far-right talking points. They're often just, again, kind of relegated to the stormfront corners of the internet, right? Like, uh, I, we're always told, Hitler is, uh, is really bad, really evil. We're always told that, but we're just, we're not allowed to have a discussion about what else happened during the period of time. And that's not true at all. I, in fact, if anything, I would encourage everybody, yes, please go investigate, learn, uh, learn how that, yes, uh, Hitler and the Nazis are not a unique evil in the world, that in fact, there has been many empires that have committed tons and tons of atrocities, including the Japanese empire, including the British empire. They've committed vile and mass atrocities, mass starvations, mass slaughters, mass killings, the Bengal famine, you name it. There is no question, no end. No, no end. There's a surplus of human evil that has been enacted and, and done, usually in the name, again, of empires or country or nationality or ethnic cleansing or purity, all that kind of shit. Yes, it, it, it has happened outside of Hitler. But that, that none of that should be used as a tool to discount the horrors and crimes of Hitler, right? It's like just because other people have done other fucked up shit doesn't mean that that's all just not fucked up shit. It's all bad. All bad, universally. It shouldn't be used as a tool to kind of be like, so, I mean, you were kind of lied to when they didn't tell you that there's some bad things that, like, say, the U.S. did. Did you know that? Yeah, the U.S. has done some pretty bad things, too. 18, that was entitled 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. And just so we're clear, that book sold over 10 million copies worldwide. That is, nobody sells 10 million copies worldwide in any book. It's unbelievable. And shortly thereafter, he embarked on an international world tour. I'm not kidding. He sold out stadiums across the world. And I remember watching this celebrity, just watching his star rise. And I was absolutely fascinated, as I'm sure a lot of women were, uh, partially because there are very few people that achieve celebrity in their later years. Jordan Peterson is 62 years old. So we were watching a person become a 62-year-old rock star. That in and of itself is quite impressive. And people definitively do not achieve that level of celebrity by being a professor. <laughs> like, so it was just be amazed. I was absolutely amazed. But there was also a piece of me, and again, I am sure that women can relate to this, that if I'm being honest, I just didn't really quite comprehend it. Again, it wasn't for me, it was for men, but I didn't find any of the things that he was sharing to be particularly earth shattering in his 12 rules. And I was shocked by the male response to it. So I'm gonna give you just a few examples of the rules that were in the book. One was set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world, okay? okay. Another one was pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. A third was tell the truth or at least don't lie. Another was be precise in your speech. And the last one was pet a cat when you encounter one on the street, which uh, that makes it sound silly, but essentially he was saying like, don't miss the small things in life. And I, I don't know if I wasn't so amazed by this because a lot of these kind of are repackaged biblical proverbs and you should read the Bible. And I'm sure that that. So um, 
yeah, I, the stuff that's as clear as day to everybody who's been criticizing Jordan Peterson for years. He's not just doing, uh, you know, spins on biblical proverbs, but it's mostly just self-help shit. You can go to any fucking, you know, gas station uh, across the, the USA or Canada uh, and see that bargain bin and see one of those, like, how to set your life in order. Uh, you know, 41 rules to success. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, okay, you pick it and you'll find a lot of the same shit. Uh, yeah, uh, look after yourself. Uh, when you uh, clean your room and you uh, shower and you take care of yourself, you exercise and you eat right, you'll probably feel better overall. It's uh, You'll be a better person, you'll feel healthier if you eat healthier and exercise because we're animals and that works so you should do those things and then you put that in there as if it's some kind of novel oh uh, uh, no one had talked about this before you know oh bloody hell bucko no one knew about these rules use precise speech word salad obviously was a source for him but i was really i guess taken aback by the male response to it in a way that was meaningful for me i actually learned a lot because i realized that a lot of men were feeling disordered. You know, I recognize that for men to have the response that they did, clearly something was missing in their lives. And I was glad that they had this male example to say, hey, listen, this is a, a little thing, but make your bed. Make your bed in the morning because it means something to make your bed. You know, stand up straight, kind of notoriously walk like a lobster, like have some self-confidence, have some self-respect. And again, it made me reflect on just how far. Have you all been obeying the laws? Have you all become the lobster, the mighty lobster? Apparently lobsters communicate by pissing in each other's face. So that's what Jordan Peterson wants for the world. Our feminism had gotten that we were making men feel so deflated that it took just one man, a professor, to stand up and say, hey, you don't have to feel that way and your life should. No, what Jordan Peterson did is he tapped into a lot of biases that we already have, repackaged them and then sold a couple self-help things and then tried to basically uh, Christian pill uh, the world uh, with his own novels. That's that's essentially the whole Jordan Peterson thing. Tapping into, yes, a lot of problems that are real, uh, a lot of problems facing that men have that should be honestly dealt with and should be respected. The question, men are suffering, men are sad, men are depressed, men are having a, a difficult time under this current capitalist system as everybody else. Uh, but the solution to that is not petting a cat. You could pet a fucking billion cats. You're, you're not suddenly going to improve every aspect of your life. You can't, is, is, there's not just going to be a code. It's, it's easier that way though. It sounds so nice. It's like there's 12 rules. If you follow all 12, you'll get it all, right? And then someone else comes along and it's an Andrew Tate. It's the same thing. It's like, hey, sign up for my course. I'll teach you how to break free from the matrix. I'll teach you how to make all the money on the cryptos. I'll teach you how to have all the pussy you can slay. It's all going to come. It just fucking it flow. You can defeat the matrix, take the red pill, hate women. You'll totally get lots more dates the more you hate women. It works that way. That's just certainly what women want is men who hate them. Uh, and yes, that someone pitching the idea that I understand your pain and I have a solution to it and it's to grift you. I understand your pain. I have, I have the answer. Make me rich. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You, you, you want to find fulfillment, happiness, all that kind of stuff? Give me money. Give me all your money. Give me all your cash. And you will certainly, hopefully, uh, learn something from the process. Should have purpose and your life should have meaning and you should do things that give your life purpose and give your life meaning. So I was like, kudos, love it. And as I said, I got to meet him multiple times. I've spoken at events with him and I was very impressed with him. Then things started to shift. So let's recap what happens. In January of 2018, so this was really at the peak of his celebrity, he appeared on Sam Harris's podcast, which was entitled Waking Up With Sam Harris. And he seemed rather incoherent when he was being asked for a basic definition. He seemed incoherent? What? Oh, not something I know of for this Jordan Peterson. Normally, again, he's a wordsmith. Very, very clear, concise. You know, he's one of those people who believes that you shouldn't use more words than you need in order to make a point. Definitely of truth. And people recognize this. Perhaps they didn't overthink it. But a couple of months later, in July 2018, he sat down with Joe Rogan talking about that moment, talking about why he was incoherent. And here is what he said. He said that it was due to the fact that he had consumed some apple cider. Take a listen. But I, so, I didn't want to not do it. Because... Apple cider. Candace Owens is like, I'd say, four years behind, like, the left in trying to go after Jordan Peterson right now. Like, this is revisiting videos and clips that we were doing, like, four years ago. As in, like, yeah, jo jo he's a charlatan. Mass scam. He is scamming young men, young impressionable men, and young depressed and sad men. It's it's fundamentally fucked and wrong. It's it's strangely misandrous, but that's just the what you get with the Jordan Peterson. Also, he's not altogether there. He's kind of batshit. The stuff he's saying true like you just you don't have a little apple cider and then because of those old soul fights you, you don't sleep for a month you're thinking of crystal meth it's crystal meth that if you take you might not sleep for a month kind of thing 
then then yes then that i would if i'm sitting across from you and you're like oh bloody hell i was so gacked out on the meth i couldn't sleep for at least three weeks uh the, the story tracks yeah that makes that makes sense i i, I yeah i yeah I, I, certainly sir but the same apple cider did that the sulfites the the sulfites in the apple cider that that seems oddly strange yeah like what, what was it's it doing? In it. what was it doing to you oh it it, it produced an overwhelming sense of impending doom and i seriously mean overwhelming like there's no way i could have lived like that how long until she hits the chinese dick milking farms i feel like that's going to be in this early segment right the whole thing is is jordan peterson okay she's probably going to get to it <laughs> i mean it's just it's an all circular firing squad you know have out of lasted for see michaela knew by that point that it would probably only last a month and i was like a month yeah from a month cider oh i didn't sleep that that month i didn't sleep for 25 days i didn't sleep what? at all I didn't sleep at all for 25 days. How is that possible? That, that, that I'll tell, tell you how it's possible. You <laughs> <laughs> when Joe Rogan is the ar arbiter of sense, you know, when he's sitting there. No, bro, that doesn't make any sense. Like that, that would kill a regular man. What are you saying right now, bro? Lay in bed, uh, frozen in something approximating terror for eight hours, and then you get up. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Not and good. this is from so, cider. <laughs> I feel like Joe Rogan is all of us. I'm listening to that and it doesn't pass the sniff test. I'm just going, wait, what, apple cider? You didn't. So just so we're clear, at this time, uh, Candace Owens was completely fine doing, uh, you know, cross collaboration with Jordan Peterson, having him on her podcast, going to events with him, taking photos with him, him having a show on the Daily Wire, the same network that she was working with. She she was working with Jordan Peterson throughout all this, all the time, all the time. This, this was completely fine. It's just only right now, post leaving the Daily Wire, that suddenly Candace Owens is, is starting to uh, take shots and again, totally here for it. Have fun. sleep for how long what are you talking about he brings up michaela by the way that's his daughter we're going to get into it that explanation does oh, not make sense to me whatsoever you're going down the weird lobster shit too oh man the right is going to get exposed to all the weird jordan peterson stuff and stuff because they watch me you know they're not clicking on the surf times they start in two seconds like oh this is a low tail low low t uh soy cuck he's not gonna know what he's talking about not gonna listen to this fucking communist i'm i'm a switch uh but candace owens now now you're gonna find I see all the pictures and clips. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not claiming to know how everybody's body reacts to apple cider, but I just don't think that you wouldn't sleep for that long because of it. Now, what potent anti-anxiety medicine? They oh, she goes through the benzos. Obviously spoke to his daughter, Michaela, as she speaks out on behalf of her father a lot. She also has her own podcast and talks a lot about growing up with him and what she's learned. And this is a direct quote from her. He's had to spend four weeks in the ICU in terrible shape, but with the help of some extremely competent and courageous doctors, he survived. She goes on to say, the decision to bring him to Russia was made in extreme desperation when we couldn't find any better option. It goes on, the article says that his family says he had been taking the drug for years to mitigate lingering anxiety following a severe autoimmune reaction to food. His dependence reportedly started last spring after doctors increased his dosage, his dosage pardon, to help him cope with stress as his wife, Tammy, battled kidney cancer. Okay, so um, immediately have some questions there. So we're saying that there was a food reaction and then in, in response to the food reaction, they put you on anxiety medicine and then the dosage was wrong and he apparently had what appears to me to be um, a drug overdose. And Michaela ends the article basically telling them like, you know, he'll speak out when he's ready. And that moment came in 2021. Jordan Peterson was ready to talk about it. This is a New York Post headline entitled, he was suicidal and addicted to benzos. From that article. I'm, I'm just so curious. What made this happen? What was the impetus? Has Jordan taken a swipe at Candace Owens? Did he like quote Twitter and be like, well, I guess maybe Christ is king for sure. But still, you, you shouldn't say those kind of things about the Jews or something like that. And now she's like, oh, OK, fuck you. You're on blast now, Jordan. Well, it reads that he was struggling with an addiction to benzos prescribed to him after a violent reaction to a strict meat and greens diet. He hasn't. This is just shots fired without any inciting incident. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, take the initiative. Uh, attack everybody. Okay. And then in regards to his cider, the apple cider uh, overdose or the apple cider reaction, the New York Post writer put this, quote, Peterson has previously claimed that he didn't sleep for 25 days during this time, but the longest period of human sleep deprivation ever recorded is only 11 days, the paper notes. So what they're saying is he lied. He, he must have lied. I mean, that's a, unless, or he just broke this record from 11 days. He, he not only doubled it, he added some, he just added uh, 14 days to the longest record ever held of sleep deprivation. Or as I said, Jordan Peterson was not being honest, which would mean that he violated one of his 12 rules. Himself, uh, no one can outsmart Ben Shapiro. 
uh, talking about rainbow tractors, and talking about trans people again, more rainbow tractors, uh, Air Jordan Petersons. Oh, maybe it was this one, because he just posted this picture, which is, yeah, this is pretty weird. It says Air Jordan Petersons with lobster Nike symbols and then Israeli flags on the shoe things. Maybe this was it? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe this was what started the whole is Jordan Peterson okay movement? Zillary to him. Now, to be fair, she is not Jordan Peterson. Of course, she is not Jordan Peterson. And we can't say that every word that she says should somehow reflect on what her father's viewpoints are. But she did tweet this. She wrote, Yes, I think the Nazis on X equating Jews with rats and using hashtags like filth should have more content moderation and censorship. No, I'm not retracting that statement. <gasps> okay, what? You're just straight up calling for censorship. I mean, saying using the hashtag filth, that is literally an English word. And you can say that word whenever you want. In fact, rather notoriously, I use the one of the very rare times that like right wingers are calling out Nazis or fascists <laughs> and being like, yeah, I think uh, if someone is a straight up Nazi and they're calling, you know, Jews rats and stuff, those are deeply racist anti-Semitic tropes that were used in the past. Probably not a good thing to be tolerating. And they're like, what? You, what? what? That, those are just words. They're English words. You the freedom to speak. Yeah. Exactly. But because without that freedom, we can't think. We can't yes. improve our institutions. I totally agree with what Jordan Peterson is saying there. It is a cardinal value, and it is true that we have to be free to critique people and to critique our should be censored. Okay. He wrote, you, at Nick Fuentes. <laughs> really are a psychopath rat. Your dad literally called me a rat last week. Thank you for exposing yourself and revealing who you really were. For. Both of you freaks should be deported to Israel since you love it so much. So Nicholas Fuentes is a Nazi, and uh, he's one of the people who, yes, is much like the Christian uh, nationalists directly conflating Israel with all Jews. And he's using his hatred of Jewish people, which he does fundamentally just hate Jewish people, um, in order to conflate the two. And so Jordan Peterson and a handful of other people have had to, and, you know, multiple times Charlie Kirk has as well, uh, knocked heads with the actual neo-Nazis. Because it's like, wow, uh, a lot of these right-wing things that we're promoting, they are very similar to to far-right fascism and, and that ideology, but it turns out we do seem to attract, strangely enough, far-right fascists. So, um, yeah, sometimes things get a little too real, and then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, Nicholas Fuentes is, is fighting Jordan Peterson. Really are a psychopathic rat. So, yeah, now we're in a conflict here. She is calling for the censorship of her father, right? <laughs> Nazis fighting with overt Nazis. I mean, if, if yeah, you're saying the standard is just calling somebody a rat, and it is not just because it is a phrase that's being directed at Jews, but because calling people rats is wrong, then your father would have to be censored. And so when Nick Fuentes raised this obvious um, conundrum to her, here's what she wrote back. She wrote back, oh my God, were you called a rat? Did that hurt? I work for myself, you loser. And I know that Jews' success is due to their above average IQ. <laughs> Even when Michaela's trying to fight the Nazis, she's still doing the IQ shit. I know that they have large craniums. I've measured them. Their skull capacity far outweighs yours, your puny IQ Nick Fuentes. Yeah, positive racism. But I of people for your failings is easier for you. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, what? So now she's like, aha, uh -huh, yeah, you're a rat. Or is that, did that hurt your feelings? That, that just doesn't seem like a stable or a rational response to someone pointing out the fact that your father just said something that you're calling for censorship for. Or are you saying that it should only be censored if it is being directed at a person that is Jewish? She's not clear on that. But what is clear is that Jordan Peterson jumped into this and doubled down on calling somebody a rat. So this all stems from her wanting to defend Nick Fuentes and his very overt anti-Semitism. Because, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who are conflating, you know, protesters and people saying that, like, genocide bad. Oh, well, are you criticizing Israel? You must be criticizing all Jewish people. You must be anti-Semitic. This criticism is invalid. Then there's Nick Fuentes, he, open and proud neo-Nazi, that hates Jewish people just for being Jewish and does say and promote a lot of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories all the time. That's that's what he's kind of known for. He's not secretive about it. He's not like, you know, a, a, a hidden or, or convert uh, racist. He's an open and proud racist. Here's what he wrote. He wrote, I apologize for calling you a rat, Nick Fuentes. Rats are just animals. They happen to be an enemy of mankind. 
So they- the Clown Wars of 2024. I know, it's it's Bozo versus Bozo here. They are like you in that regard, but they are merely acting on instinct, whereas you are motivated by a will for ignorance so deep that it's- But again, the Jordan Petersons of the world, same with the, like, you know, uh, Michaela, they don't realize that uh, this is who you are attracting when you are spreading a lot of this kind of stuff, though. The, a lot of the, the principles that you put forward, if you spend all day being like, LGBTQ plus people are groomers, LGBTQ plus people are pedophiles, this is uh, them uh, castrating children, they're, they're a threat to children, LGBTQ- who do you think that resonates with? The Nazis, the the neo-Nazis, the, the fascists, the far right, all of them are like, oh, yeah, we believe that as well. Yeah, yeah. And so Hitler did nothing wrong. Is that is that what we're vibing with here? And then all of a sudden Jordan Peterson is like, no, I never said that. No, I mean, I can understand that, you know, Hitler did some wrong. I'm, I'm just saying LGBTQ plus people are groomers and pedophiles. Yeah, totally. Like the Nazis did. Was, did that, the, you want to burn some books with us? We're going to be doing some book burnings. What's going on here? It's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from you. Why Why are you upset? Kind of a miracle, in combination with a profound malevolence. So I was unfair. To the rats. Hence my apology. Take note, Michaela. He further added, I don't regret the psychopath moniker, however. You and your followers, I know your type, buddy boy, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> he still talks like, like a 1950s abusive drunk dad, you know? You and your followers, I know your type. Buddy boy, but you don't know mine. No, mine. Okay, so parking aside the fact that it's written in sonnet form, which is uh, something that I don't quite understand why he's doing that, uh, Jordan Peterson has built himself as somebody who is calm, who is rational, uh, who relies on logic, who is a person who believes in radical free speech. He's now coming to the aid of his daughter and essentially doubling down on calling. But yeah, so a lot of the stuff, by the way, in the past, this was all happening with you promoting and working with him constantly. The, the only thing that's changed is no longer part of the Daily Wire. So you leave the Daily Wire and then all of a sudden it's like, well, hey, wait, Jordan Peterson's going after Nick Fuentes. I mean, is Nick Fuentes really that bad at the end of the day? Sure, he says some edgy stuff, spicy takes, but... This is again a 62-year-old man calling a 24-year-old a rat. And what is the reason, by the way? Because we, we should also say what... A 24-year-old Nazi. A Nazi. He's Nick Fuentes. <laughs> By the way, I just want to remind you all that he's quite young. So is that really something that you want to promote, you know, calling 24-year-olds rats? What is it that Nick Fuentes said that garnered that response from Jordan Peterson? And Nick Fuentes wrote one word on Twitter. He wrote Jews. Now, what was that in response to? Well, somebody asked the question. We know that Joe Biden is not in control of the White House. So who is in control of the White House? <laughs> That's anti-Semitism, Candace. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Jews don't control America. <laughs> and what was his crime? <laughs> Pray tell, what did this noble 24-year-old say? <laughs> and Nick Flint has wrote a one-word response. Jews. He's saying Jews are in control of the White House. And that garnered a response from Jordan Peterson calling him a psychopathic rat. Now, we all know that Nick Fuentes has branded himself as somebody who expressly hates Zionism. He expressly hates Israel. Um, and he expressly hates Jewish people. The rest of it happened to do with the whole false conflation that Christian nationalists have successfully pulled off and that everyone, until very recently, it seems, completely believed that any criticism of Israel seems to be a criticism of all Jewish people. And he is saying that Jews in the White House are now obviously in control because Joe Biden is not. Now, to be fair, the Times of Israel has noted in the past, this is an actual article from them, all the Jews Biden has tapped for top roles in his new... Fair <laughs> to the Nazi? <laughs> <laughs> it's so wild trying to do this so like as if it's somehow subtle you know as, as if it's like all right so i don't know why that jordan peterson would feel it's appropriate to again call a 24 year old you know a young man who's got his whole life ahead of him by the way he could be a very very contributing member of society to, to call him a rat and a psychopath and stuff like that for what what was his crime i ask you well at the end of the day he was responding to someone saying who controls america and he responded with jews now uh Okay, I know it sounds bad. It, it, just on the surface, that does sound very anti-Semitic. It's in conspiracy written. But I posit this. This is from the Times of Israel. And, and they point out that there are members of the Biden administration who are, in fact, Jewish. So. Administration. This is from 
back in 2021 when Joe Biden uh, first was inaugurated as president. And it goes on to say Joe Biden filled the months before inauguration day, lining up a slate of cabinet secretary, secretaries, assistants and advisors, many of them Jewish. It goes on to give us a rundown of all of the Jewish names, all of the Jews that they are saying are in his cabinet. You have Anthony Blinken. You have David Cohen, the CIA director. You have Merrick Garland, the attorney general. You have Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence. You have Ronald Klein, the chief of staff. So it seems a weird tweet for him to be so disturbed and? about. Now, again, it's likely because Nick Fuentes has a very long background of focusing his attention on Israel and Zionism. And that's what he is. No, what are you saying? He's been always focusing it on Jewish people, Jewish people. He hates Jewish people, all Jewish people. He can throw in Israel there, but you're trying to do this false equivalency. This is like, he's just as bad as all the other fucking racists, you know, uh, Jackson Hinkle, infrared. All the people who are like, yes, no, I, I deeply care about criticizing Israel and uh, the imperial core. That's what. That's why I'm doing this. And also, Jewish people control the media, and Jewish people control the Biden administration. And have you seen all the amount of Jewish people who are in the Biden administration? And I, is that really a controversial thing to say? I know Nick Fuentes has said some, again, very, very controversial things in the past. I mean, who amongst us hasn't? But at the end of the day, is what he's here worthy of Jordan Peterson's criticism is reacting to also because Nick Fuentes has called out Jordan Peterson explicitly for a very long time as somebody who he believes has more of an allegiance to Israel than he does to Western civilization in general, essentially that he would put Israel before he would put Canada and before he would put um, America. Now, I don't know if that's a fair critique of Jordan Peterson, but I do know that it is off brand for him to respond by calling someone a psychopathic rat. I mean, calling somebody a name, calling somebody um, an animal when you are billing yourself, right, as the call. Can we call him a Nazi? Is that is that too much? Can we call Nick Fuentes a Nazi? Can we call him a Jewish people hating Nazi? Is that is that too much? Have I have I crossed the line into insulting a, a poor, helpless 24 year old? Um, rational psychologist, doctor who insists on logic and that the better ideas should win is just going to be off brand. But we should also be honest here that while people are pretending this is about Jordan Peterson versus the Groypers or pretending that every person. No, she doesn't go to the cock milking fetish porn. Oh, she skipped over the best one. That's of, of all the wacky Jordan Peterson things to point out. And she was doing like a bit of a build up where it's like, yeah, he's kind of lost his mind, right? He's saying things that are factually inaccurate. There's no way apple cider made this man not sleep for a month. That's utterly ludicrous. We can point this out, right? You got to pull up the fact that he actually fell for a, a fetish video and, and he thought it was part of some CCP program. <laughs> he thought it was part of a Chinese communist milking program to create a, I guess, super soldier, communist super soldier, special breed. Just another day in, you know, CCP hell or whatever. <laughs> it's so glorious. It's so glorious that it was left up for like hours until the right found out about it. Because I guess uh, we were having too much fun here on the just laughing and making and posting endless memes. I remember Robert Evans was trying his best to get blocked by Jordan Peterson. And for some reason, I guess he just wasn't noticing him in his replies. But every day he was just like, oh, Daddy Peterson, tell me more about how to breed the ultimate communist super soldiers. <laughs> and all this kind of shit. Ah, oh, it was so much fun. But then the quartering had to go and ruin it and be like, at, you know, Michaela, at all these people, your dad is posting fetish porn, holy shit, you gotta stop him. And Michaela was like, he did what? And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, someone clearly phoned and told Jordan Peterson, you gotta delete this. It's, I know you don't delete tweets, I know, but uh, this one is just, it's way too wacky. <laughs> that we're seeing right now that is having a battle right now it's due to the grapers that that is not what we are watching right like i said this began long before it arrived between a beef between michaela and jordan peterson and her father it really began with people feeling like they don't trust the voices that are in the media and jordan peterson is one of these voices and that distrust in jordan peterson actually began when he wasn't radically honest about his addiction and then it began further when they saw him you were fine working alongside him you both worked to the exact same company at the daily wire you cross collaborated constantly you were fine with all of this he goes after the fucking the neo-nazis and then suddenly it's like hey is jordan peterson okay is he all right he's apparently calling out nick fuentes a 24 year old you know known and notable before being 24 years old. That's what everyone knows Nick Quint is. As far as like his accomplishments, all the things he's done, it's mostly that he's a 24 year old. So yeah, I don't know what Jordan Peterson's thinking here. It's pretty wild. And basically not behaving in the way that he instructs others to behave. You know, there is a, a famed expression, those that can't do teach. And people are wondering if Jordan Peterson is one of these individuals. He cannot do, he does not live his life in order, but he teaches order. Virtually everything that we've seen happen has seemed quite chaotic in his life.
Let them cancel on each other out. Who says the same trash coin? Oh, I hope they respond. I, I hope this starts a whole feud. I like. I know that right now, Candace is kind of baiting a whole bunch of different people and going after a whole bunch of right wingers. And like, you, you love to see it. By the way, keep going, please. You know, all power to you. Attack everybody. Go, go after every single uh, other fucking far right chud that there is, and then all sort of massive uh, chaotic fire. But I don't see Jordan Peterson responding to this. I, I think maybe Michaela and and Jordan are gonna pick and choose their battles. You know, it's it's hard to start stacking up against a bunch of other massive creators too right and it seems here that there is some kind of unholy alliance between uh candace owens and the groipers and her defense of the groipers and so oof, charlie kirk has learned the hard way about what fighting the groipers is like they go they go hard you know his correspondence with his daughter watching this on twitter genuinely was just chaotic i thought this is chaos what is this why, why do we have a psychologist and his daughter and her, his daughter's calling for the cens speech censorship and he's not agreeing with her necessarily but he's doubling down on you right but, the, but jordan has a book that could help you there isn't it like maps and chaos or the chaos dragon and mother's grandma's brush or something he's got he's got this covered too and the word rat which she says needs to be censored it felt like chaos it didn't feel like 12 simple rules and so that is why I believe that a lot of men have fallen out of love with Jordan Peterson because they don't perceive him as somebody that is living his life. It took us a long time to get here, but the uh, the theory that she's putting forward is a lot of men don't want to follow Jordan Peterson because he was willing to criticize the Nazi. That's that's the sum total of this. Yeah. That's the, this it, it, in a very weird way. And, you know, then his daughter also wanted to criticize a Nazi and then, you know, did a whole positive racism towards the Jewish people. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's essentially what this is. Honestly, I would, by the way, jump at the opportunity to have a discussion with Jordan Peterson. I have no bad feelings about, it, about him whatsoever. Like oh, I said, yeah. he treated me extremely well. Every time I've ever spoken to him, seen him, he has been very kind. But this Works is a him. moment. We are watching a shift in politics. And I would love to know if Jordan Peterson believes that this shift is simply because there are people that are so awful and so rat-like and not deserving of our time, or if he recognizes that there's something larger that's happening and he's perhaps developing tunnel vision and thinking that it's because of the Groiper movement, when in reality, people have, are losing trust in the institutions and they're perceiving him as part and parcel of those institutions now. Anyways, again, I would welcome that conversation with you, Dr. Peterson. It would be a pure... It's just wild. Uh, I, I hope, you know, I wish her the best of luck. I hope she has success uh, in, in this battle. You know, may, may they uh, go to war with each other. Um, she's upset that Jordan Peterson was calling Nick Quintes a rat. And then she tried to equate that to people who call Jewish people rats. And again, it's one of those where there is a pretty uh, long and uh, very documented history of anti-Semitic tropes of comparing uh, Jewish people to puppet masters, to rodents, uh, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it, it makes sense why someone would point out, well, this is actually an anti-Semitic trope that Nick Quintes uses when he refers to Jewish people. Now, when Jordan Peterson is calling Nick Quintes a rat and a psychopath, she's going to the defense of Nick Quintes. Being like, well, why would you call this 24-year-old a psychopath rat? Why, why would you do that? I mean, apparently, it's not okay to call Jewish people rats, but it's okay to call Nick Fuentes. In this case, again, a 24-year-old, notable for being 24, uh, a rat. Secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash the serves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Puppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwyn, Sebastian Demel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood. With additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.